Folks, this is a short video following up on a podcast I did recently on the book of Job over at the Bible for Normal People. Hey folks, welcome to some bonus coverage of my podcast not, that I did recently on the book of Job, which is just such an amazing book. And you know, even if you're skimming the surface, an hour podcast isn't nearly enough even to hit the big highlights. So I wanted to take a few minutes here and sort of do some bonus coverage on something that I think is really, really important and that gives us a feel for the book of Job itself. Um, It'd be nice if you listen to the podcast first, but you don't have to. You can be a backwards person, that's fine. But this is going to supplement something that I say. There are a couple of things that I say there. So, Anyway, let's get on with it. Here's the issue. In the first two chapters of the book of Job, a word pops up exactly six times. And... The Hebrew word, uh, by the way, the first two chapters is where the whole drama of the book is set up. And the Hebrew word that's used there six times is the word barach. I'm not just saying that to impress you with Hebrew or something, but, you know, barach is, yeah, Barack Obama that comes from that. Or baruch is a fairly common name, at least in the Bible, maybe elsewhere too. But that word means to bless. Very common word. It occurs six times. But what you realize when you start reading the book is that... I know it says Barach, which means bless about 10 million times, but there's no way it means bless every time in these first two chapters, and that's in fact true. It means curse. If you look at English Bibles and just count the number of times it says bless, and then count the number of times it says curse, those two English words are the same Hebrew word. And you say, well, that's impossible. That's like saying red is blue. Well, exactly. The writer knows what he's doing. The writer is trying to get you to think about something. And what he's getting you to think about is something we have to look into here in the next few minutes. So let's just look at the instances where it's used. It's used the first time in chapter one, where uh, Job is described as this amazing guy who, you know, is super pious. In fact, he's so pious that he says, you know, he, he offers sacrifices for his children in the event that they might have sinned without knowing it. And we read in verse 5, he says, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. That word right there, that's barach, that is to bless. So every time you come up to this word bless, you have to make a decision. This word baruch, actually, you have to make a decision. Does it mean to bless or does it mean to bless? In other words, to curse. And here it clearly means to curse. There's nothing wrong with blessing God. So he wants to sacrifice for them in case they've cursed God in their hearts. Well, a little while later, we have a really important and well-known scene in the book of Job. And this is where a figure called Ha-Satan, which means the Satan, actually means literally something like the adversary or the accuser. Think of this figure as sort of a um, prosecuting attorney. In English Bibles, it'll be translated as Satan with a capital S, like it's a, a name or something, but that's completely, utterly wrong. This is not the king of the underworld. This is someone who acts as an adversary or an accuser, which is what Satan means. Again, like a prosecuting attorney. So there they are talking up in the heavenly court someplace, and um, God says, you know, Job is awesome. Have you seen any, ever seen anybody like this? And Satan, the accuser, says, well, listen, the reason he worships you like crazy out the wazoo is because you've blessed him. You've barocked him. Right? He has everything. He's got money. He's got fame. He's got kids. He's got a wife. He's got a fantastic life. Take those things away, the accuser says, and let's see what he's made of. So God says, fine, do what you got to do. Took everything away, kids, you know, money, uh, status, all that kind of stuff. He's left with nothing except just himself. Here's the point. The accuser says to God, listen, take his stuff away, and then he will barach you to your face. He's only worshiping you because you've barocked him, blessed him. Take this stuff away and he'll barock you, bless you, curse you. And what happens? Well, everything's taken away. And then later on in this chapter, we have some of the most famous lines in the book of Job, where Job says, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Barach. See, the accuser says, listen, he'll curse you, he'll bless you if you do this, to, if you take this stuff away from him. But instead, he actually blesses. The accuser wanted Job to bless, instead Job actually blesses God. Okay, so far so good. Next incident is another one of the dialogues, the second dialogue between God and this accuser figure. And God starts bragging on Job again. He says, this guy's fantastic. Look how great he's doing, blah, blah, blah. And the accuser says, listen, of course he's doing well. You haven't touched him. You've just taken away his stuff. Make him suffer personally, physically, and he will barach you to your face. He'll curse you to your face. And so God says, go ahead, but just don't kill him. Do what you want, just don't kill him. He's got to be kept alive. So he's miserable. He has boils from the foot of his uh, sole of his feet to the head of the top of his head. And he's miserable. And let's see whether Job will curse God or whether he will bless God. That's really the dialogue here. And the key figure is now his wife. His wife who has been silent this whole time. She has a little cameo appearance. And Job is suffering. Everything's taken away. He's physically suffering. And his wife comes to him and she says, Do you still persist in your integrity? Barach God and die. Now what does she mean by Barach? She probably means curse. And in fact, Christian art and Jewish art have depicted Job's wife as sort of being a consort of Satan or of this accuser, of this adversary, of this prosecuting attorney. She is acting like he is. She wants Job to do what the accuser has wanted Job to do, which is just to curse God and be done with it. And it's a shame because you wonder, what's he going to do? But see, here's the problem. There, actually, it's not a problem. It's a beautiful thing that the writer puts in here to make you think. The way it's conventionally understood is what I just said. Job's wife asks the question, are you still persisting in your integrity? Just curse God and die. The thing is that in Hebrew, it's not a question. It could be a question, but it's not necessarily a question. It, it, it sort of looks just like a run-of-the-mill sentence, just a statement. She might not be saying, she not, might not be asking a question, are you still persisting in your integrity? She might be making an observation. Joe, my husband, you are persisting in your integrity. And there's Christian art too that depicts this scene, not where the wife is sort of like an adversary to Job, but where she's a comforter to Job. She actually um, gives him communion, you know, the bread and the wine. She's, she's with him in his suffering. So you can translate this not as a question that accuses Job and that wants him to, to denounce God and to curse God. You could read this in the exact opposite way. Let me elaborate a little bit just to get the feel for it. You could read the wife as saying, Job, my dear husband, you are amazing. After all this, you're still maintaining your integrity. Now, you don't seem to have long in this world. You can't possibly be alive much longer. Just bless God one last time and then die. So which is it? Well, I think that's exactly the choice that the writer of this story is presenting to the readers. What will Job do? Will he bless God and die or will he curse God and die? Will he finally curse God because at the end of the day, he's not worshiping God because God is God. He's worshiping God because of what he does or does not do for him. Now, you read throughout the book of Job, and this is the podcast, gets into this kind of stuff, and Job is not, he never curses God, but he sure as heck gets in God's face and challenges him to give an account for himself for why he's doing this. And by the way, he never gets an answer. Mm. So there's the podcast for you. I keep plugging the podcast. It's 50 minutes. Come on, folks. Anyway, but the thing is, we readers are looking at Job and reading this book, and we're confronted with the same question. Why are we, why do we believe in God? For Christians, why do you go to church? Why do you do all this kind of stuff? Do you do it because you think you're going to get something out of it? Or do you do it because God is God and that's the end of the question? That's one of the most central 
and profound questions of the book of Job. It's not just about suffering. It's about how you look at God and what you do about that uh, faith that you say that you have. Why do you believe? What happens when things go bad? Do you keep going or not? Anyway, like I said, this is, trust me, we just skimmed the surface on this issue. And it's been 10 minutes. It's just looking at one word in a few verses. But again, watch, listen to the podcast, and I hope you enjoy that. And I hope this can make some more sense after you've watched, uh, listen to that. And um, thanks for watching. It's been fun. Hope we do this again sometime. See ya.